Hello friends, so uh, we will continue our discussion from the uh, previous lecture uh, when we are talking about the variation of uh, different parameters when the uh, waste is introduced in the environment particularly the river systems. We ended that discussion with Streeter Phelps equation uh, which uh, describes how the dissolved oxygen varies in a stream in a running stream or river when a waste stream is introduced in it. So, uh, we will um, further elaborate on to the variation of the uh, biological oxygen demand or BOD and dissolved oxygen in the stream which is receiving the waste water or waste input. So, uh, for BOD uh, which is the biological oxygen demand what happens that there is a usual assumption which is taken that the rate of oxygen consumption or the oxygen demand is directly proportional to the present concentration of degradable organic matter. Okay. So, the amount of oxygen which is getting consumed is actually proportional to the amount of organic matter which is being degraded and the general convention is that we take the amount of organic matter degradation typically in such stream as first order. Now, there are again uh, quite a few assumptions involved in it, it could be first order only when there is no dearth or no limitation of dissolved oxygen. So, assuming there is significant amount of dissolved oxygen is always present in the system, okay. then the decomposition or decay of the organic matter, decay of the BOD will actually be as a first order equation which we uh, talked earlier also. So, how it happens that let us say uh, let us say this L t is your the oxy organic matter representation or BOD at that particular given time t okay, or the BOD remaining at time t in the system. So, initially the existing BOD or the initial BOD is L 0 which is there in the system okay, that is my initial BOD. that means at time t 0 which is normally we call as ultimate BOD also. So, our ultimate BOD is L 0 and with time it reduces and the reduction follows first order. Reduction follows first order, so first order obviously first order means the rate of change is going to be the proportional to the existing BOD L t and we can take that proportionality constant which is your deoxygenation uh, coefficient as we discussed in the previous week. So, k d times t and uh, this equation is fairly simple to integrate. So, we can have uh, d l t is equal to minus k d times uh, sorry d l t by l t is equal to k d times d t. Right. And then if we integrate it both side k d being a constant will come. So, we will get l n l t is equal to uh, l n l t is equal to minus k d and this side it will be t plus of course, integration constant. Okay. So, by like you have an integration constant now uh, what we can do we can have uh, this let us say from a time 0. So, your uh, time t varies from here uh, 0 to t then we do not need integration constant and this we can have uh, from at 0 our concentration is the L 0 or ultimate BOD to L t. So, this becomes L n L t. Uh, this becomes ln l t minus uh, ln l 0 and right side it becomes minus k d uh, t minus t 0 or t 0 is actually 0 over here. right? So, this equation eventually translate to this value and what we get 
is the solution of this equation as L t is equal to L 0 e to the power minus k d into t. Now, this L t here is the amount of BOD remaining in the system or amount of organic matter remaining in the system. Since the amount of organic matter there is the constant, so initially if you see the uh, amount of BOD remaining at any given point of time amount of BOD remaining in the system and amount of BOD exerted. Okay, BOD exerted is basically the oxygen consumed at any point of time. So, the amount of BOD exerted plus amount of BOD remaining the sum of those two has to e be equal to the initial BOD okay, because the amount which has been consumed and how much oxygen is still being demanded. So, that way we can uh, get this. So, BOD exerted if you want to determine that way. So, BOD exerted which typically we say BOD 5 means how much oxygen has been consumed in 5 days that is what we determine right. So, uh, BOD exerted or at uh, any given time t will be equal to the initial BOD or initial estimate of the organic matter and remaining BOD in the system. So, L 0 minus L t and we know that L t can be written as L 0 e to the power minus k d t. So, we can take L 0 as common factor and what we get is L 0 e to the power minus k d t. So, this is the typical your uh, value of BOD exerted this way. Okay. So, say 5 day BOD if you want to determine. So, BOD 5 will be L 0 minus L 5 which is L 0 1 minus e to the power minus 5 into k d if the k d unit is per day and on a base of log e. Right. So, that is how we can uh, determine the BOD exerted and BOD existing or BOD remaining present in the system and this is how we uh, can see, see the trend. So, since this is a first order uh, kinetics, this is a first order equation. So, you will see a exponential decay in the BOD remaining okay, and similarly an exponential increase in the BOD exerted or amount of oxygen consumed. So, that is how the BOD profile looks like in uh, a river because uh, there is if we ignore all other this thing. For dissolved oxygen, uh, we have discussed this in uh, previous lecture as well that dissolved oxygen changes primarily due to the deoxygenation and reoxygenation. So, deoxygenation which is proportional to the organic matter present in the system as we were seeing that it is proportional to the amount of BOD present in the system or organic matter present in the system and reoxygenation which is proportional to the deficit of DO. So, if my saturation DO is let us say 10 and my existing DO is 6, so this reoxygenation will be proportional to the difference where it is existing. So, 6, 10 minus 6 it will be proportional to 4. Okay. Now, uh, if we see the different processes or uh, different routes through which oxygen comes and so there will be some dissolved oxygen coming in the in stream, there will be some dispersion of oxygen, there will be some oxygen leaving the stream if you see this is your control volume for say uh, there could be dispersion across this boundary as well. Then there is some uh, mass load which may be coming from let us say wastewater stream there could be atmospheric exchange or atmospheric transfers ok. Uh, there could be mass abstraction so something is being taken away there uh, is uh, bottom algae which uh, can actually release or take uptake oxygen depending on that and similarly the sediment can exert oxygen demand as well as can consume oxygen for certain processes. So, there are variety of routes, but for simplification purpose as we say let us ignore all other thing and see that the oxygen is being consumed for the decomposition or degradation of organic matter present that means through the route of deoxygenation which is one of the primary routes for the uh, oxygen consumption in the river anyway. And the oxygen inflow is in form of the atmospheric transfer which depends on the DO deficit which is proportional to the DO deficit. So, uh, further if we assume that the saturation value for DO remains constant because uh, if uh, saturation value also depends on the temperature, but let us uh, for practical purpose say at a time the saturation value remains more or less constant. So, then 
we can see how this DO varies. So, rate of change of the dissolved oxygen or rate of change of the DO deficit ok. Now, we see that DO deficit the root of uh, DO coming in the system is actually in the form of uh, is in the if, if we see the DO deficit it will be proportional to the deoxygenation time which is actually the consuming the DO right. You, you see the importance there are two processes. So, one process is uh, which is the degradation of organic matter is consuming the DO and that is proportional to the rate of that is proportional to the existing organic matter. So, if we do in terms of dissolved oxygen we see it is proportional to the organic matter present in the system the inflow of the dissolved oxygen rate of the dissolved oxygen or we can say it is actually K d times L t negative because what this process is consuming oxygen. right? So, since this process is consuming oxygen this term is going to be negative. right? However, we are not talking about the rate of change of the dissolved oxygen here, we are talking about the rate of change of the DO deficit means from how far we are from the saturation value. So, more and more oxygen getting consumed the deficit increases. right? So, if there is more organic matter present in the system more oxygen is likely to consume and the deficit is likely to increase. So, that is why this term is positive here. Now, the second term that you see is actually for the re aeration. So, we know that uh, the rate of change of the dissolved oxygen will actually increase with the re aeration. So, whatsoever the existing deficit is there ok, accordingly the oxygen will get uh, transferred from atmosphere and it is going to increase. So, the KR is the re aeration constant, but again since we are talking about the deficit. So, increase in the oxygen content means decrease in the deficit. So, our deficit is going to decrease. So, rate of change for the deficit due to the re aeration is negative ok, because it is decreasing the deficit re aeration is decreasing the deficit ok, the deficit is reducing and the decomposition of the organic matter is increasing the DO deficit. So, that uh, first term is positive and second term is negative ok. Now, uh, we earlier saw that L t can be written as L 0 e to the power minus k d t and then we can rearrange this equation as this ok. So, we take this term right side. So, we have this kind of equation which in fact is a standard uh, differential equation which can be solved by the application of integrating factor. Okay. So, the typical equation is of this form and this type of equations are typically solved by multiplying an integrating factor on both the sides of the equation of the form of e to the power this function what we have. Right. So, our existing equation is something like this if you say that y is equal to d t here. So, this becomes y and our p x becomes k r this is our the p x ok and uh, of course, this is our q x. So, if equation is of this form, so we can use an integrating factor and our integrating factor has to be e to the power integration of p x d x. So, e to the power integration of instead of p x we have k r. So, e to the power integration of k r into d t because uh, this is our uh, y here ok. So, uh, into uh, this thing which eventually turns e to the power k r to the power t ok because integration of k r d t will be k r into t. So, this becomes e to the power k r t. Now, if we multiply this integrating factor e to the power k r t on all the terms. So, what we get is this which eventually uh, we can uh, simplify it like this way 
okay, this, this is a simple multiplication. So, we have e to the power minus k dt and e to the power plus k r t. So, it becomes minus k d minus k r into t right and uh, this side the, this thing that we have actually if we uh, the in the concept of integrating factor this will eventually change to this form and then we get our equation like this. And this is integratable equation. So, we can integrate this equation further and what we will get by integrating this. So, uh, do a integration with respect to this term in the form of integration factor and then eventually this equation converts to this and which is a known equation we have seen this earlier also this is your streeter phelps equation or the classic streeter phelps equation which is the uh, which gives the do sag in a river or in a running stream uh, which is also known as do sag equation so uh, here this equation can be converted to uh, 10 base also this is on a log of exponential base and accordingly if you do at 10 base. So, these uh, parameters or the coefficients are going to be changed we will have to divide it by the uh, E value that way. So, this we get streeter fels equation by uh, solving all this equation like this this is solution uh, standard solution we will not discuss each and every step in the detail and the uh, notations remain the same L0 is your ultimate BOD, D0 is your uh, initial oxygen deficit, DT is the oxygen deficit at any given point of time and KD and KR are respectively deoxygenation and reoxygenation coefficients per unit time. Okay. So, these are expressed per unit time if your time is in day. So, these will be in the day inverse the unit of these coefficients. So, this way we can actually get the DO profile also and uh, we have seen earlier how this DO profile looks like in the Streeter Phelps equation. Okay. So, this we will get a net dissolved oxygen profile like this line that you are having here. Okay. Now, a few more information we can extract. So, when the waste is introduced in a river and as we discussed the different zones of a river receiving uh, a waste water. So, we had first a zone of decomposition and thereafter a zone of uh, septic zone and uh, followed by recovery zone. So, the septic zone was the one which is the worst condition and when we have the dissolved oxygen level touching minimum. Okay, what we call typically critical point. So, we will have a zone where the dissolved oxygen levels are very low are probably not able to sustain good enough of the uh, fishes and those kind of thing in a typical sense. So, this particularly this critical level of dissolved oxygen or this point of dissolved oxygen okay, which is called critical point can also be estimated. Now, how we can estimate that critical point or at what time or at what distance because time and distance are convertible in a river if you have a fixed velocity. Okay. So, uh, at what particular time this is likely to occur or this critical point is likely to occur can be obtained uh, with the help of Streeter Phelps equation. So, this point is where the dissolved oxygen level is minimum and dissolved oxygen level minimum means the DO deficit is maximum. So, the DC or critical DO deficit is actually the maximum and how we get minima or maxima from a equation we take its first derivative and we set that first derivative as 0. So, that is what we can do here okay. the most critical point in the river can be obtained uh, by taking the first derivative of this Streeter Phelps equation and that Streeter Phelps equation if you see that you take the first derivative of this Streeter Phelps equation and put that as equal to 0 and solve this. So, what we get the critical time at which the DO will be minimum can be obtained by this expression. Okay. So, this expression will give us the critical time and 
uh, putting the this critical time in the original expression we can actually get the critical distance as uh, critical uh, oxygen deficit as well. So, the critical oxygen deficit or DC then can be obtained in as this okay, depending on uh, this equation okay. this probably is 10 base otherwise it will be e to the power minus kd into uh, Tc. Now, the rate constant here that we have k d by k r is called the self purification constant which is typically denoted as f and is an indicator of how what is what is the self purification ability or self purification capacity of the river. Okay. So, that that are few additional information that one can obtain from the Streeter Phelps equation. Now, if you see the self purification constant of various water bodies, so the small ponds or uh, sort of uh, water has uh, very low value of k r. Okay. So, they are uh, the re aeration coefficient or the rate at which they get the oxygen is very low and their self purification coefficient also remains low. We have sluggish stream or large lakes or uh, impondus reservoirs having higher value of the cell purif uh, higher value of the um, your uh, k r k okay, and relative and uh, respectively higher value of your cell purification coefficient. So, as we move large stream with low velocity then with normal velocity the swift stream or rapid and waterfalls which are having very high chances of the aeration the re aeration coefficient is substantially high of the order of uh, say 0 0.5. So, they have a cell purification coefficient of over 5 so, that means there is uh, uh, they can actually do the purification uh, of such discharge or organic matter decomposition at quite rapid rate. Okay and they can tackle lot of uh, organic matter as well. So, uh, there are quite a few applications of this Streeter Phelps equation as well as there are quite a few limitations as well. So, applications are uh, like it, it is uh, one of the widely used equation for uh, modeling contamination modeling in the river particularly the dissolved oxygen and uh, BOD levels profiling uh, in a river body. So, it is used largely for that time it is used for prediction of uh, what would be the uh, what would be the dissolved oxygen level at, at certain distance in the downstream or after certain time at a fixed location uh, what would be the level of organic matter if it is uh, discharged at any given point in a river. So, how it is going to be uh, vary or for how long it will sustain. So, all those kind of critical information can be modeled we can uh, estimate the critical zone of the river also what is likely to be the zone for the least dissolved oxygen concentrations okay, or the highest DU deficit as we were discussing. And we can also determine or we can also find out how is going to be the uh, like what is going to be the level of dissolved oxygen okay, at the lowest level of the dissolved oxygen critical level of the dissolved oxygen. So, that way there these are the uh, like basic applications of the Streeter Phelps equation. However, there are quite a few limitations as we were saying and uh, these limitations are very obvious okay. one can easily uh, like if you uh, if you see from the basics how it has been derived and what kind of assumptions has been made. So, one can easily as know what are the basic limitations of this cla uh, classical Streeter Phelps equation. The first thing that it has assumed that uh, there is a single BOD input. So, at the point where BOD is mixing in the river post that there is no further BOD input because we are straight away taking the uh, like the L 0 which we have taken and we are considering its decomposition day by day. We are not 
considering any additional input or any further input at any intermediate point of time or space in the river. So, that is one of the consideration, one of the criteria that has been adopted uh, which may or may not hold true for a river body. Largely, if you are getting a large sewer, uh, large uh, let us say uh, sewage discharge connecting to a river system and then uh, gen typically the sewage discharges are done in the downstream of the city. So, if you are already putting all this waste in the downstream of city and after that river is going to a low population zone out of the city area and then this thing. So, there is no major contribution in terms of pollution or in terms of flow anyway. There might be uh, some limited contribution here and there, there might be some tributaries also coming in uh, and joining in. So, uh, that will do further dilution and all those, but until unless those kind of major stuffs happens, the river more or less does not get any uh, large load of pollution or flow and that way the Streeter Phelps equation can be held applicable to such stretches. It also considers that uh, the flow in the river is in kind of ideal plug flow because that is why we have considered the first order decomposition. Okay. So, uh, it actually it is not getting uh, mixed in the it is only getting mixed in the axial direction and not in the literal direction which is one of the basic assumptions of the plug flow. We will discuss these uh, what exactly plug flow means in one of the later uh, uh, classes probably this week only. So, uh, then it, it will get more clear, but uh, the idea is that it uh, plug flow thing is on gets only mixed in the axial direction and not in the literal direction. Then there are uh, another assumptions that it considers only one source and only one sink for the dissolved oxygen. So, the dissolved oxygen source is only the re aeration or only the uh, re oxygenation where the ox atmospheric oxygen is coming in the water and dissolved oxygen sink is only the decomposition of organic matter. So, the decomposition of the organic matter or biodegradable organic matter is the one which is consuming dissolved oxygen from the system. So, that existing BOD and particularly that carbonaceous BOD we have not considered the uh, NBOD also. So, the CBOD is the only considered source and the re aeration is the only considered sink uh, on, sorry re aeration is only considered source and the carbonaceous BOD or CBOD is the only considered sink for the dissolved oxygen in the Streeter Phelps equation. It does not consider the other routes through which oxygen can actually uh, either take a inflow or outflow from the system or from the river uh, stretch. There is possibility of the removal of some of the some of the BOD or some of the organic matter by sedimentation, then the suspended BOD could convert to the soluble BOD, there is oxygen demand from the sediments, so oxygen can go to that also. There is uh, photosynthesis which leads to the addition of the oxygen or production of the oxygen it ignores that as well. So, uh, there could be respiration uh, for which oxygen is needed. So, all these requirements are largely ignored in a Streeter Phelps equation which can works on a basic assumption that uh, the rate the reason for change in the dissolved oxygen in a water is either deoxygenation or reoxygenation. So, uh, the discussion we had so far were focused when waste is introduced in a river system and which is the prominent way of receiving uh, waste. The waste is typically discharged into the water ways only particularly the liquid waste. However, at times it goes to the land application or even at rare times people inject it in the subsurface or ground waters as well. So, the pollutants present in the waste will again get attenuated even if it is applied on a land or if, uh, if it goes into the subsurface. However, the uh, most of or majority of these processes are applicable in the other systems as well. However, the dominance of some of the processes can change. For say the contaminant discharge uh, sort of uh, 
in the soil or the contaminant which is applied to the land, the adsorption become much more prominent because there is uh, when you are putting it on a land, your water is interacting or this uh, thing is interacting with lot of uh, sediments, lot of solid materials, it is there is a lot of surface available as opposed to in a river, in a river the availability of surfaces are very low, only you get bottom sediment and all that and bulk of the water flows as it is. So, uh, the suspended solids if it is uh, if there is not enough suspended solids, you hardly get too much of surface for adsorption purpose. However, in land application since there is a lot of surface is available, the adsorption process becomes much more prominent for the contaminant which are applied to the land. At the same time, the transport processes particularly the advection, diffusion and to some extent even dispersion becomes relatively less effective. Okay. However, the leaching and the subsurface transport uh, can also become more pertinent. What happens that uh, the when you apply it on the land and it, it does not have a way or say uh, capacity to flow horizontally, the water or the contaminant along dissolved contaminant along with the water will percolate to the subsurface and those contaminants can leach out then to the groundwater. But if there is let us say a heavy rain or flood is occurring, it can take those contaminants through surface runoff also and can lead back to the water bodies. So, all these processes are there, the decomposition of organic matter in the soil will again depend on the type of microbial consortia present in the soil. Many cases or majority of the cases it will be slower as compared to the decomposition in the liquid because the microbial consortia or the uh, microbes prefer the solubilized substrate or the when the organic matter is in the soluble state and since organic matter uh, is soluble state, uh, they, there are like more chances of solubilization and this thing in the water as opposed to when it is applied to the land where organic matter can actually get adsorbed onto the uh, soil minerals or uh, soil my, uh, this thing. So, there is a possibility that the bacteria or the microorganisms have to deal with the solid phase substrate or the substrate which is adsorbed onto the solid phase, um, organic matter which is adsorbed onto the solid phase and that is relatively less preferred by the bacteria. So, that is why the decomposition could become slower, however that is not the case always, there are uh, it depends on the type of species present, type of organic matter present also. In some cases one can see a faster rate of decomposition or faster rate of degradation on land rather than that in the water depending on the condition to condition basis. However, in most cases it may be it, it is expected to be slower in solid phase as opposed to that in the aqueous phase the uh, decomposition of organic matter. The another important point particularly associated with the land application is that there is uh, or agricultural application there is some soil organic matter also uh, like the soil also contains some of the soil organic matter and these soil organic matters are also a form of organic carbon or organic compound which can fulfill the need of the microbes for their uh, uh, for their substrate requirements. So, in water generally a clean water will not have any organic in it or the BOD of the water is very low that way and when waste is introduced the organic matter present in the waste or BOD or the uh, COD present in the waste is the source of the organic carbon which is available for the bacteria to decompose. But in soil there is possibility of having alternate organic source. So, if you are having some difficult to degrade or relatively tough to degrade compounds in the waste water, your uh, microbial consortia may not even attack that because there is an easy substrate available in the form may be in the form of soil organic matter and those kind of stuff. So, that way 
the degradation or decomposition will also depend on how much is the ex existing organic matter present in the soil. If it is being disposed in the ground water, so again the ground water has relatively low mobility as opposed to the uh, surface waters and there are lesser chance of natural attenuation or natural transformation also. Because in the ground water there is no, tip, usually there is no oxygen, so natural oxidation process becomes very difficult, some reductive reactions can take place, but uh, oxidative environment is uh, not there. So, uh, the typical oxidation of the compound is uh, limited. Then the another important part is there is a lack of microbial consortia okay. as we go into the deep ground waters or that way. So, there is not enough microbial activity there. So, if there is not enough microbial activity, so those biodegradation is also almost inhibited and that way the decomposition of the organic matter. Uh, becomes very difficult if you inject waste into the subsurface or into the ground water, into the deep ground water particularly. So, those uh, however, uh, the ground water also flows and the contaminant may flow along with the ground water depending on what is the speed of ground water flow which is governed by the uh, Darcy's law and uh, various other hydrostatic or hydrodynamic conditions in the subsurface. So, uh, these are the sort of some of the natural processes which works upon when the contaminant is released in the environment and uh, we will conclude this discussion here and next class uh, we will take up some practice problems on uh, the discussions happened so far this week. Thank you.